There was one note on here, something that you said, Ashley. You, you, you represent the businesses down there. I understand that. Then you start looking at who represent the people. And, and, and what's a little bit worrisome on this um, discussion of how do we achieve some type of balance in a in getting to the point of where we want to be, um, um, the, that personal income tax is done away with. And nobody wants to roll all of the money over on uh, the consumers. I mean, the consumers can't take all of that. You have to place that back somewhere, the burden of those. So it's got to be somewhere equally shared. And I, I hear people talking about, well, you know, the automobile dealers, the farm equipment people, the businesses don't want that. But then again, where else is it to go? It's got to be equally shared somewhere. Would you agree? Well, you know, look, I I look at this a little bit differently from the standpoint that, you know, we always have these discussions about taxes in terms of, you know, and sometimes you hear government refer to it as revenue, which is kind of an interesting word. But, you know, we, hear, we have these discussions about taxes in terms of the fact that, you know, we have a set amount of expenses and the money has to be generated somehow. And so if it's going to, you know, if we're going to take money out of the grocery tax, we've got to replace it with another tax to make sure that the money is there. Unfortunately, what I don't think we see enough effort in is to shrink the size of government spending. Uh, you know, I worked in the state government under two governors for the better part of 10 years. And, you know, I can tell you, we could knock 30 percent out of the spending in the state of Mississippi and folks would never even notice a change. I mean, there's so much waste. And I think, look, I think the philosophy of, of the governor the lieutenant governor and the speaker have all been aligned with that. I mean, they have all looked at ways uh, to, you know, to, to have good government, to have conservative government, to cut spending, but there's still a long way we can go. And some of it is not uh, just under the legislative purview. I mean, you know, look at the number of school districts we have in Mississippi, the, the amount of administration that we spend. Uh, we have far more school districts in the state of Mississippi than they have in the state of Florida that has millions more people than we have. So there's there's so many ways ultimately that we could cut the amount of expenses that we as the taxpayers are having to pay in. Uh, and I think that that would be a place to start the tax conversation. Uh, let's lower the amount of money that, uh, that yeah. we're having to put into the system and then figure out a way to divide it equally among, among us to pay for it. Have you been contacted as far as the proposed or planned um, study committee? No, we, we've not uh, we've not heard anything specific about that. Uh, we've been working real closely with the Mississippi Economic Council uh, mm -hmm. and, and making sure that the business position on this is, is understood. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, folks will, will criticize and say, well, you know, the businesses don't want the tax burden put on yeah. them. And, and that's true. But, I mean, you know, we're the ones creating the jobs. We're the ones employing the people in the state of Mississippi. Uh, that's not That's not where you want to put this burden. Uh, because at the end of the day, that burden is just going to get passed along ultimately to the folks. And, uh, yeah. and that's, not, that's not what we ought to be doing in terms of taxes. How much money is left of that? We have $750 million. How much money is left of that, and how much will be dispersed the next round out? state has already spent a couple hundred million dollars. Uh, there's about $500 million still to come in. You know, keep in mind, this is, a, this is primarily a coast issue. We get 75% mm -hmm. of those funds spent down here. But the rest of the state of Mississippi gets 25 percent of that total. Uh, so we're not just talking about projects that will occur on the coast. This is really occurring statewide. And, you know, this is no different than, than really every other type of public spending we see. We just want there to be some sort of a sophisticated vetting of projects, you know, an analysis of the benefit versus the cost, uh, you know, some sort of projection of the return on investment so that we can understand if, you know, if we put a dollar into a project, is it likely to put 10 or $20 yeah. back into our economy rather than just simply being expense that takes this one time money uh, and it's gone forever? And, uh, you know, it's, it's a simple concept. Unfortunately, uh, you know, what's simple in concept is, is sometimes hard to translate into the political process. What are you how, how are the fisheries doing? What's the prospect on that? Because they were they were basically decimated under this. But how how's it looking there as far as the fisheries are concerned? You know, they're coming back, uh, but, you know, you, you look at the coast. I mean, we've had more economic disruption on the Mississippi Gulf Coast than yeah. really than any other single region of the country over the last 15 years. Uh, you know, the oil spill hit in 2010, but, but since then we've had, you know, the Bonnie Carey Spillway opening. We've had the Mississippi River flooding that, that, you know, flushed the sound with fresh water. 
We've had the blue green algae outbreak. Uh, I mean, it's just been one punch yeah, after the after the other for folks that make their living on the water. And uh, you know, th- hopefully, this is going to be a summer that we're going to start to see uh, things coming back up to baseline. Uh, but but it has been a struggle, and and we really faced a lot of challenges down here. We have a couple of new names that I'm sure you'll be working with and have been working with is John Ronsville. He'll be on next week, and we had yesterday Ryan, uh, Ryan Miller on the new workforce development. So I think we got a good team in, in place. Well, I'll tell you, you know, uh, John and I worked together in Governor Barber's office way back mm-hmm. when, and, uh, and I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I think he's great. I think, I think Governor Reeves made a tremendous pick. You know, John is, is one of those guys that you love to see working in a government position because he approaches it like a guy from the private sector. Uh, he makes deliberative decisions. He's easy to work with. You know, there's no sort of ego there or mm-hmm. pride of ownership. He just wants to you – know, he's really a facilitator. He just wants to make things happen. And so, uh, you know, I think we've got some great leadership up at MBA. Uh, and I'm excited about the work that they're doing. You know, huge announcement with Milwaukee mm-hmm. Tools which I'm sure yep. you guys have been talking about, uh, and we need to see more of that. The other thing I'll tell you that's really impressive about, about John Ronsville and, and about Governor Reeves is they both understand the concept of the fact that the, that the economy is really evolving here. And so it's not just manufacturing. It's not just tr- traditional economic development. It's also, you know, how do we retain and attract talent to our state? Mm-hmm. How do we grow our workforce? How do we diversify our economy? I mean, these are all things that are important to them. Those are the kind of things that we really preach a lot at the Gulf Coast Business Council, and and we've definitely found a, an audience uh, with with our leadership in Jackson on those issues. Ashley has. Um, can you point to any from that two hundred million? And I know you got a portion of that. Any businesses or amenities or projects that have gotten the money and the work has been done, and it's kind of headed toward restoration. You know, there, there aren't a lot of them, to be honest with you. I mean, all of the projects just about that were appropriated last year, none of them have actually started drawing down the funds yet. And in mm-hmm. many cases, what we saw this year was that the, the legislature just reappropriated those dollars to the same projects and then and then upped them a bit in terms of their appropriation. So they may have gotten $4 million yep. last year and they're you know, seven now. Uh, but many of them have not have not got going yet. Uh, and when we look back three or four years ago to the early money that the legislature spent, uh, you know, there were renovations on some of the campuses of the universities. There was money spent on buildings at USM and Hattiesburg. There was, you know, th- there were things like that, that that were spent ultimately. But, you know, they're not these sort of game changing projects. And, and let me just say this, Paul, because I think this is important. You know, we don't expect the legislature to have to come up with game changing projects. You know, they can't just invent those out of the air. The, the private sector has to be involved in that. One of the struggles that we've had is there haven't been great projects that have come through the application process. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, let's just go and spend the money every year. You know, my position is, hey, if if we don't feel like the projects that came in this year are up to par, uh, let's hold the money. Let's not let it burn a hole in our pocket and let's wait for those opportunities to arrive. Let's not just uh, not just spend because it's there. Were you happy with what the what the lieutenant governor said, or was it lacking, or are you guys going to have another meeting, or wh- where does that stand? Well, you know, he, he essentially said that, that the way that they have approached this, this issue, this coast-specific issue, is that, you know, that they don't want to sort of meddle in the coast business, and they said, look, you know, you don't want the entire legislature meddling in the coast affairs. These projects have been decided by your coastal legislative delegation. You know, and I understand that sentiment, certainly, but on the same note, uh, you know, we, these are dollars that have been entrusted to the leadership of the state of Mississippi to make sure that they are spent uh, in the best interest of its citizens. And, you know, we, we feel like that's yeah. something that, uh, you know, that's everybody's job. It's our duty. It's the duty of, of the legislative leadership, of the legislative members, of the average citizens. You know, we've got to be engaged in the process to make sure that, uh, you know, that we're getting that return on investment. What, what would you consider job number one if you had the, the wallet out of the checkbook out and you're going to write a check for it now as far as some of the BP fund? What would be job number one that needs to be done? Well, you know, we, we're real big on the blue economy down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And what we mean by the blue economy is essentially the, the, the ocean economy, things that, are, that revolve around our proximity to the maritime mm-hmm. environment. Uh, there's going to be about $5 trillion 
projected a new investment uh, in the blue economy over the next 10 years. And we're in a perfect situation here to leverage a lot of that, attract a lot of that investment here. So yeah. uh, you know, if I had the checkbook, the first thing yeah. I would do is start building the infrastructure to attract those, those dollars from the private sector.